obviously a lot of people that you grow up around, some of them end up going into gangs, some of them end up being dead, some of them end up being in prison, some of them even end up get, doing well with their lives. Mm. And it's shown. Um, the thing about the whole postcode thing, I think is personally because like, where I've grown up, I've lived there my whole life. Yeah. I know my neighbours, I know my community. I also own a business in my area, right. kind of thing. Um, so if I see that someone from another postcode or from another area yeah. is trying to this my postcode in my area, I'm like, this is my, this is but where I'm from. How are they from. dissing? Is it just coming to or see their, or, their grandma or buy or, a pound of apples or get a pair of shoes? Why are they, they dissing could, it? Because they, they, they're not coming there for that reason. If, if they're coming there, if, they, if they're dissing our area, they obviously don't like our area. So when you so say like, when you say they, it's not it's not me going there, no, is it? It's no. not my team, it's not Gemma, my producer, going to your area, is it? Yeah, no. It's what a young boy that you that you know is in the gang up the road. Yeah, but you said, saying, you said though, didn't you, Ari, that in, in your area, it's not even a postcode thing. No, it's a down the road yeah. So you don't even have to come in. Like so they have grown up there. They have grown yeah. up there. They've lived there their yeah. whole lives, and and just walking down their own road is mm. considered to be disrespectful well, or that trying to take over something or trying to prove a point or something. But how can they can't stay in the literally on their estate and never walk down their own road? Can they? I mean, it's it's it's, it's battle of two different estates, isn't it? It's like who's better than? Who's do you believe in this, or do you think it's ridiculous? I don't believe in what it. What do you think? I of think it? I think it's ridiculous. I, I think, think ridiculous. I personally believe that we're fighting over property that's not even ours, land that's okay. not even ours, basically. But of course, no it's point. not yours. Um, and we act like it's our land, kind of thing. That this is where we're from. This is our estate. This is ours. You would have thought, us. though. I mean, maybe it sounds ridiculous to you, but you would have thought that the big aspiration would be to get the hell out of the road and go somewhere else. Not to be guarding your small part of Church Road or Peckham or whatever it is, but to just to, to, to leave and go and get but on an aeroplane or a ferry or a bus or a coach and, a and go somewhere else been. and have an adventure and see the world and do stuff, not stay guarding your, your tiny part of whatever estate it is. It just seems so terribly, do you know, it seems terribly, terribly sad, Joshua, the whole idea of that, don't you think? Yeah. You know, doesn't it? Do you not think? Yeah, I, I, I do. I, so I understand small what and so sad, but isn't if, it? If I agree you... with what he's saying about it doesn't start off as a gang. It starts off as a friendship group. These things kind of escalate. You know, young boys, when they stick together and when they form this gang, yeah. they start off as just looking for security. Yeah. A lot of them are neglected. A lot of them are seen as socially unacceptable. They form these peer groups because that's what they are peer groups with their friends, boys that got kicked out of the same school yeah, to almost have a sense of security. Yeah, let That's me bring Sienna back in. Yeah. Sienna, hi there. You're still there. You know when you asked the question, did you already know the answer though? Yeah. Say, so what, is, what is totally different? The postcode war. Why? What do you mean? Yeah. And oh, Sienna, thank you for the call. Let me read you some of the stuff that's coming from the lot. Um, this is from A, who says, um, and, and when exactly are you doing the show about teenagers who are happily productive or happily inactive? When is the hardworking, responsible, law-abiding team going to get an hour on the radio right now? Is the answer to that, Ian Stratton? All of my listeners, all of my guests today, are responsible law-abiding teams. So I hope you had a chance to eat these words. Um, a says, "Yes, knife crime should be discussed. I have a teenage boy, but this narrative just conflates normal teenage behaviour with knife carrying. Not this narrative. Not on this show. And yes, this is a show that celebrates teens. It's not a shame. So revise your opinion, pronto. Um, Vanessa, do your guests believe that celebrity culture and rap music?" lyrics fuel the need for status and do they think that traveling anywhere oh i just said that didn't i might open young people's minds that's today. let's ask a read um i think that if 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 you've grown up in an area and all you've seen is um selling drugs and cars fast cars and money and, mm -hmm. and nice clothes and stuff that's all you're going to know but if you if you've grown up in an area where you, you you've seen um Aeroplanes flying above your building, you were wondering, wow, what's, what's that? Where's that going to? I wish I can go somewhere like that. Or well, everyone's seen aeroplanes flying course, above course, their building, course, 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 and everyone's course. seen yeah. seen everything else have, on TV and everywhere else. If you have a specific else. role model in your area that's actually doing well, you can actually see that this person's really doing well. I mean, f uh, five, three, four years ago, there was a company that came into the UK called ACN, yeah. and a lot of young people were getting onto that company because it's got a residual income scheme. 
So when a lot of people What's kind of residual? residual income is like you work hard now and you get paid constantly. So I can I can go I can work hard now mm. and go to holiday for a whole month and I still get paid right, my okay. salary the next month. Okay. Um, so a lot of young people were getting into that. Um, and the reason why they were getting into it is because they were seeing their friends doing well and they were seeing their friends like driving nice Mercedes and stuff like that because yeah. they were doing well in that. Yeah. So similarly, if we had things like that in place in our communities, if we had the right funding to have certain community centres and certain things opened up where they, they have people that they can look up to rather than just the, your local drug dealer, yeah. um, then I think that they can be a difference made. Mm -hmm. I think just in general, a lot of these kids don't have the values that they need to have in Let's their lives. Let's bring Amina into this. Why have you chosen to behave in the way you're behaving, which is... It seems to me, you know, you're a great person, you are studying, you're thinking, you're not part of this, you're observing it, but you're not in it. Why, why not? How did you manage not to be? Well, I personally believe it's because of my upbringing. I was brought up there, I was brought up in Jamaica. I see. So okay. that's made my values, my morals completely different from the English children. I remember when I first came to England, yeah. I was shocked at how the way the... <laughs> I was True. extremely shocked at the way the English children spoke to the teachers. I was thinking, when if this was Jamaica, straight rod, I was extremely shocked. I think it's as what um, Arib was saying, yeah. it is the educational system, it is the education system. If at a young age they're taught morals, they're taught values, they're taught manners, uh -huh. certain things that are happening now would not be ha would not be occurring at all right. and i also do agree with the lack of youth facilities that keep youth centers youth keep opportunities the opportunity is just really not there we should just revise what, what, what joshua said which was he said you know there is staff but it's it's boring and exactly. it's we, we have, a community, it's there, it's we have a community center in church road but yeah. the only time i see that community center open the funerals because of it's, they hire it out for events for funerals, they don't give us that space to use because they don't think we can use it. They don't. They don't want us to use that space. Really? And it's why been proven time and time again. Why that is that? That community in Church Road, community yeah. centre in Church Road, they actually do offer um, gym. Yeah, they've got a gym facility. And stuff does like anyone that. Use, do, do you They use don't it? promote it. Right. Like, I remember in primary school, I used to go there. Mm. Everyone knew about it. Everyone used to go there, and I was like. They don't really care whether you go or not. There's no flyers about saying there's these events. They don't. There's no community don't, events yeah. as well. So, so I, I'm going I'm to ask you all the same question. Arib's a bit older, so I'll come to him last. But, but I'm going to ask you the same question. You're all 15 years old. Um, and I, let me start with Takesha. What are you hoping is going to happen for your future? What, what's your plan for your life? And I know you're young to have a life plan. I'm not saying that <coughs> I had one when I was your age. I probably didn't even think about it. But, but when you do think about what you hope for for your life, what are you hoping is going to happen? Well, for me as a person, yeah. I aspire to be a youth development worker right. and an event planner. I've already started. I work for the Pi Project. Yeah. I'm a youth coordinator. I'm deputy young mayor. I've got all of these opportunities, and I plan to use my advantages to help those with disadvantages. That's a hell of an answer. That's yeah. amazing. Let's yeah. ask yeah. Amina. What, what about you? Have you thought it through? What you're hoping to do next, etc. Well, I'm hoping to actually become a plastic surgeon. How are you? But to overall, I'd like to become a head teacher in my own schools because still, I personally do strongly believe that. If the education system is changed, yeah. then there will be a change. Mm. Because at the end of the day, if the edu if the education system isn't correct, you're teaching the people of the future. Yeah. And if they're being taught the same values of this same generation, nothing will change. It's like a domino. It will all be the. I wish you all the luck so, in the world with it. I yeah, have every confidence. You. Whatever it is, you're going to achieve it. Let's ask you, Joshua. What do you think, sir? I'm really passionate about football. Right. And yeah, I just want to be a footballer. Okay, well, I hope it comes good for you. I really do. And let's, Arib, you're a grown up now. What do you do? Um, I, at the moment, I've got a business. It's, yeah. a, it's a meat shop in Church Road. Yeah. Um, I personally believe to make a difference. I personally believe that businesses, um, businesses are what runs the politicians and what makes, which makes the changes. Uh -huh. so I personally believe. I think I'm going to build my business. Hopefully, um, make my business big enough where I have enough funding so that I can kind of like. Fund certain things. Listen, I wish you all, like all the luck in the world. I, ca I, I can't thank you enough for coming in. It's been absolutely amazing and a great education for me to meet you all. And I'm not, you can see, I'm not just saying it to be polite. It's really true. I really have so enjoyed seeing you and I, I've been so moved by what you've said, some of which is so, so bleak and so worrying. I wonder what my listeners is, uh, are, are doing as a result, probably struggling to just 
assimilate everything you've been saying. Thank you so much to all of you. Thank you to Joshua very much indeed. Thanks to, to Keisha, Amina, yeah. and I really thank you, all of you. Thanks to everyone who joined in the program. Thanks to my team um, who put this whole show together. Of course, we were not showing the horrible side of London's teenagers. We were showing the uplifting and the inspiring side. I hope that's what we managed to do. And uh, uh, Robert's coming up next. He's going to be joined by the author John Boyne, who's known best for the book The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Um, I'll see you in the morning. Have a great day. Lots of love. Bye bye. Well done, guys.